read verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, exclamation mark, saith the Lord. And as you can see here on the side task, there's a lot of scriptures that go back to this word pastors. And this is a very common word in many of the Christian denominations today. I want to take this back to the Strong's and let's look at this line again. Okay, whoa, it says, oh, oi, be unto the pastors. And a pastor is raw. It goes back to to tend a flock that is pastorate. To graze, generally to rule, by extension to associate with, break, companion, keep company with, devour, eat up, evil, entreat, feed, use as a friend, make friendship with, herdman, keep sheep, pasture, shearing house, or shepherd, wander, or waste, that destroy, a bad. Uh, that goes back to Abaddon, that's sort of like uh, a word used for Satan, causing people to wander, that is to lose oneself by implication to perish, destroy, causatively, break, not escape, fail, lose, cause to make perish. And that's what happens when we get into these false doctrines or traditions of men. Okay, that destroy and scatter. And then it's got F. This is a uh, yeah, a sense of entity right here. So scatter to dash in pieces, literally or figuratively, especially to disperse, break, dash, shake in pieces or two pieces, cast abroad, disperse, disperse selves, drive, retire, scatter abroad, spread abroad. The sheep goes back to migrate, to migrate, a collective name for a flock of sheep or goats, also figuratively of men, small uh, cattle, flock, flocks or lambs, sheep, sheep coat, fold or shearer or herds of my pasture in the sense of feeding, pasturage, concretely a flock, to tend a flock. There's many right here, but I'm just going to pick up this one right here in John 10:12. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, and we have one shepherd, and that's our Lord Jesus Christ, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. And I just wanted to point out the word catcheth. So a lot of people use that same word to... Uh, because it's harposa, and they, they want to use uh, associate that harposa with gathering um, or the catching away. Well, you know, here's a prime example of Satan, the devil, catching away. So, you know, this word, it depends on what is being spoken. Cannot use that word in, to uh, change the word gathering. It's not the same word. Not the same. So just be watchful because here, here's a prime example of how they use this word out of context. But I just wanted to point this very first scripture out because it's important to understand which pastors he's talking about. He's talking about pastors that are teaching false doctrines and false traditions of men. And how do we recognize this? How do, how do we recognize someone when they're uh, not true. How will we know if we do not study our Heavenly Father's Word for ourselves? It's real simple. You know, we have to check them out. If they tell us something, we, we need to be able to go to our Heavenly Father's Word and research it and study it ourselves. And the best way I have found is using a King James Version Standard Bible and a Strong's Concordance because 
we have an English translation from the original manuscripts that go back to Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. The Strong's gives us the fuller meaning of the words, just like we're seeing here, right here at the bottom of the screen. When we look at pastors, it gives us this whole description right here in the Hebrew. You know, there's a lot more to this word, and we can understand our Father's word better. And this program, eSword, is really good because, just like we can see here in the side task, we've got other scriptures that cross-reference what we're reading here. And I just find this a, a great program right here because you can just go straight to the Strong's and look up the words. Uh, the branch, you know, a sprout. Um, it, it's just wonderful. It's like right here, the word, our righteousness. It's talking about Sadak, that's the right. And then right here, the Lord. Look at this one. There's a lot of people that use uh, the spelling of the name. And I'm not you know, a nitpicker, but you know, uh, it's Y-E-H-O-V-A-H is how his name is spelled, Yahweh. And here's the pronunciation. Doesn't mean it's spelled this way. It just helps us to understand how to pronounce it better. But it's with a J in the English because J is like Yahshua. Like Yahshua, Joshua is how it was pronounced. That's Jesus. Somewhere along the way, it got changed to a G sound instead of a J, a Y. So, anyway, but uh, here's his spelling of our Heavenly Father's name. It's right there. You know, this is his real, his formal name is Yahweh. Okay, I apologize for getting a little bit off track. I just felt like this was so important to explain this very first scripture right up front because that's what we're talking about. That's what we're, the study is about in this, in this chapter. Our Heavenly Father's talking about these false pastors and how they have scattered his children or his sheep and he's not happy with what they have been feeding them and they're, he's, they're feeding them false doctrines and false traditions of men. So let's continue. Okay, we'll hop over to the next one. That's Jeremiah 23. And Wormwood is found in verse 15. Let's pick up the topic here. In verse 1, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor! Exclamation mark, saith the Lord. You know, this is preachers, pastors, rabbis, whatever. Holy people, holy men, supposed to be teachers of God's word. Verse 2, Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock, and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Verse 3, And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds. And they will be fruitful and increase. Verse 4, And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Verse 5, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. Now who could that be? And a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Raise unto David, King David, a righteous branch. This is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Messiah. Verse 6. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. And when you understand that Judah is saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. Well, those ten northern tribes got scattered abroad, and they make up what we know as the Christian nations today. But we also should understand, too, if you, if you don't know, the house of Judah and the house of Israel shall not be joined together again until the second advent, which is the return of Jesus Christ. And that doesn't happen until the seventh trump, and that's after the false Christ appears. You know, we're going to have the false Messiah 
standing where he ought not in Jerusalem, in the holy place, claiming himself to be Christ, Messiah. So this point right here, this is the dwell safely is got to be after Christ returns. And we can look over here. And I bet it'll pick it up. Yes, this is on the Lord's Day. This is on that, at that seventh trump. You can see it in the side task. All these right here. This is when all this will take place. In verse 7, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Verse 8, but the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Right here's that scattering, like we find in the Gospels, the book of James, to those children scattered abroad. That's a prime example right there. They're still scattered to this day. Verse 9, mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. And these are the false prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. And here's a warning to the tribes, of, the ten northern tribes of, uh, called Ephraim. Isaiah 28, woe to the cr crown of pride. To the drunkards of Ephraim, double fruit, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Verse 10, For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. Verse 11, For both prophet and priest are profane, yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Verse 12, Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. Verse 13, And I have seen folly in the prophet's of Samaria, these are those ten northern tribes of the house of Israel, they prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. Verse 14, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hand of evil doers that none doeth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Verse 15, Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood, and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. So we have this, have this cup, this tonic this water that's in this cup is made from worm wormwood it's bitter drink the water of gall that's hemlock or poison or venom and look up here in the side task in reference to this word profaneness it says hypocrisy they're hypocrites they're play actors for from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness or hypocrisy they're play actors they're those Pharisees that our Lord Jesus Christ confronted and those scribes and we can learn more right here it's in Revelation 8 11 and the name of the star is called Wormwood with that capital W that's important to understand and the third part of the waters became Wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter Let's go to verse 16. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets, these false prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. 
Verse 17, they say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto one, every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Verse 18, for who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? Question. Who had marked his word and heard it? Question. Verse 19, Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. It's not talking about those who love the Lord and stay true and make that stand. Verse 20, The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. Amazing. And right here in the side task, uh, with a cross reference to verse 20, this is beginning the Song of Moses at the end of chapter 31. It goes into chapter 32. If you haven't read it, please do so. The Song of Moses, it tells about the tribes scattered abroad. And why they don't remember who they are. And then we also have a reference in what song are they going to be singing. Those who, you know, become Christians. They turn to the Lord. They, you know, repent of their sins. And they believe in our Lord Jesus Christ and keep his testimony. Revelation 15, you know, it tells us right there. What song will they be singing? It's the song of Moses and of the Lamb. Verse 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. This our, is this our Lord speaking. He didn't send them. Yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. I mean, he gave us the prophets in his word. His holy word. We do not need a person today claiming to be, claim to be a prophet. If they claim that they're a prophet, you can bet they're a false prophet. Because our Heavenly Father already gave us His Word. His prophets are already written of. There, his Word is through His prophets. It's there. We know what's going to happen in these end times if we go study. Verse 22. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Verse 23. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Question. Verse 24. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Question, saith the Lord. Do not I feel heaven and earth? Question, saith the Lord. Verse 25. I have heard what the prophets said. They prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed heard that so many times. Oh, I've had me a rapture dream. Verse 26. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Question. Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Verse 27. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Verse 28, the prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the shaft to the wheat? Question, saith the Lord. Verse 29, is not my word like as a fire? Question, saith the Lord. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Question, hammer. Verse 30, Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Verse 31, Behold, I am against the prophets, said, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. Verse 32, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them, Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. Verse 33, And when this people, 
or the prophet or a priest shall ask thee, saying, What is the burden of the Lord? Question. Thou shalt then say unto them, What burden? Question. I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. Verse 34. And as for the prophet and the priest and the people that shall say, The burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man in his house. Verse 35. Thus shall ye say, Every one to his neighbor, and every one to his brother, What hath the Lord answered? Question. And what hath the Lord spoken? Question. 36. And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts our God. Verse 37. Thus shalt thou say to the prophet, What hath the Lord answered thee? Question. And what hath the Lord spoken? Question. Verse 38. But since ye say the burden of the Lord, therefore thus saith the Lord, because ye say this word, the burden of the Lord, and I have sent unto you, saying, Ye shall not say the burden of the Lord. Verse 39. Therefore, behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you, and I will forsake you and the city that I gave you and your fathers and cast you out of my presence. Verse 40, And I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you and a perpetual shame which shall not be forgotten.